Welcome back. We are here on eToro looking at the commodities market and the precious metals market. And this is going to be my daily forecast for October 2nd, 2020. If you like to support our channel, you're welcome to subscribe, hit the like button and the bell button. And uh, let's get to it. So most commodities got absolutely hammered today. If you look at... Uh, at oil prices at our WTI, we fell all the way down to 70, uh, 77, 77, and uh, that is the lowest um, price level we have been on for well the last three four weeks now. Um, this was expected mainly due to the fact that uh, oil prices uh, demand for for oil is lower at this moment as the world economy uh, is slowing down, both in the United States, in Europe, and especially also in Asia. So demand is, isn't there at the moment. And then you have also uh, big oil producers uh, like Russia and others that are talking about uh, um, increasing their production. And of course, an increase in production will just um, add to the supply of oil and when demand isn't there, then prices will fall. We'll most likely not see as a drastic fall as we did in, in February to, uh, to May. However, we may go and retest these lows of $30, uh, $30 and so on. I don't expect gold uh, oil to uh, drop significantly lower from there. Probably the main reason I'm saying that is that most oil producers do not have a um, profit when they get that low. When they get under $30, they're basically producing at a, at a loss. So they will you know, try to cut their production and therefore uh, try to increase prices again. But if you look at what happened today, we rallied towards the 50 uh, moving average and then broke down quite significantly. We were down more than 5% at one point today. And um, at the end of the session, we pulled back uh, just a little bit. And at the moment, we are at uh, $38.74. Uh, um, and I do expect us to go lower from here. Um, if we go higher, then we have the 200 moving average as uh, resistant. We have the 50 moving average as uh, resistant as well. And then we have um, this area here which will also be resistant so i don't just i don't see um a possibility for an oil rally we have to have some major event in the world like a war near a major oil producer or something like that in order to have oil prices spike and um, the world economy will be in the slum for at least of the forecoming future so the price of oil will depend on whether or not uh, production will be kept at a low point or um, or if uh, demand will basically in increase again. And I just don't see um, demand coming back anytime soon. So if you look at the Fibonacci retracement for, for oil, uh, we can see that the first Fibonacci retracement is at the $30 level. The 50 Fibonacci retracement is at 25, and then 61 is at at uh, just above $20, $21. I do expect us to go all the way down to 30. It will not be a massive drop, and all of a sudden, um, this will take time. A grind lower will probably have some rallies on the way, and then and at some point we'll most likely get down to the 30 level. So if we look at natural gas, natural gas um, dropped significantly two days ago, rallied yesterday. Today we try to rally and then pull back. Um, this is very similar to what uh, natural gas has been doing in re uh, recent uh, sessions. We have gotten close to the 50, 50 moving average and then, and then basically bounce. And that's also what we're doing right now. Technical indicators, however, for natural gas are not looking very nice at the moment. Um, 
the stochastic is very negative. Uh, the uh, the MACD is pointed to downward momentum, and the RSI is technically flat. However, as long as the weather conditions in the United States are as they are at the moment, don't expect this market to basically fall off a cliff. Uh, we have also a um, trend line that we have to break in order to basically get to the 50 moving average. And if we were to break this trend line and the 50 moving average, we have the 200 moving average will definitely be significant support. Uh, if we break to the upside, then of course the highs of uh, of uh, last week uh, will come into play, which are at the two dollars and eighty five cents. And after that, we have this area here, which is at around two dollars and ninety one. And after that, we go all the way to uh, three uh, three dollars and forty one cents. So. This is definitely not a market I am shorting. Every pullback is uh, basically a buying opportunity. However, this is a really, really uh, aggressive market. Things can get ugly really fast. So um, if you trading this, uh, similar to trading uh, oil and so on, stop losses are essential. Otherwise, you'll basically rip your account apart in no time. So if you look at copper, So, out of all the commodities that basically fell today, copper was probably the one that got a hit hardest. So, we had um, uh, an increase of price the last five trading sessions, and today we basically fell basically off a cliff. Um, copper is basically used in technically everything. So, when copper uh, decreases in, in price, similar to oil, that is basically a proxy for uh, the world economy or manufacturing. And this is not a good sign for manufacturing around the world when you see copper basically falling uh, this drastically, uh, basically twice within only two weeks. So what we may see occur here is... Um, retest of the 200 moving average it's all the way down here and it gets clearer when we look at the weekly chart because the technical indicators for the weekly chart are dreadful if you just look at the stochastic we crossed the signal line uh, last week it's it's basically going to head downwards. We are about to cross the signal line for the MACD, indicating uh, bearish momentum. And the stochastic was nearly overbought and now is basically heading to downwards momentum. So this will basically is indicating that we, first of all, will test this 200 moving average at um, 2.7744. And after that, we have the uh, 50 moving average underneath of the two. 0.65. I do expect us to bounce from, from this uh, uh, moving average, similar to what we uh, experienced here. So the 200 moving average has been um, support in the past, and I do believe it will be support again now. This, of course, um, may be a sign that the world economy is slowing down and that it has an effect on on um, on uh, the price of commodities. Uh, subsequently, the U.S. dollar also has uh, had an effect on commodities uh, in recent days. We can also look at the Fibonacci retracement. If we take the lowest point here to the highest point, we can see that the first Fibonacci retracement is just above the 50 moving average. So expect significant uh, support within this area here if the 200 moving average were to break in the weekly chart. To the upsides, uh, if we were to bounce from here, similar to what we did only um, the last five trading days, and then we have the 50 moving average as uh, resistant now because we're trading underneath it. 
and we also have the highs here of uh, 3.04 and then the highs of 3.1178. So if we look at gold, so gold has rallied today. We're still trading underneath the 50 moving average and uh, we have a lot of work to do in order to get higher in this market. Uh, I am fairly bullish when it comes to gold in the long run due to the fact that the world economy is very sluggish at the moment. Central banks will have to prop up the world economy by uh, injecting um, cheap liquidity, uh, printing dollars and so on, and therefore the price of uh, gold will increase. However, we have a lot of work to do in order to get through this resistance area here. We have this trend line that we have to break through. We have the 50 moving average above. And then we have this entire area, which we tried to break through several times and did not manage that. So at this point, I could imagine us getting close to this trend line and then breaking down. I have been anticipating uh, a drop all the way down to at least uh, 1850 or 1800 uh, level. But I would not be surprised if we fell all the way down to the 200 moving average. Um, I think that is more likely than we basically break through uh, these resistant areas here. Um, we will do that eventually, uh, but at this current moment, I think that we will go lower before we go higher. If you look at the technical indicators, they are uh, fairly bullish. You can look at the stochastic. It is across the signal line indicating a higher um, um, bullish momentum. Uh, we have the RSI also indicating similar things. And the MACD is about to cross the signal line indicating bullish momentum. So, but it will depend... If we break through here, of course, we'll go higher to these, uh, to these, uh, to these high. But I do expect a lot of uh, resistance when we get close to this area of 1900, um, which we also have tried several times in the in recent in recent weeks. If you look at silver, we can see a very similar scenario uh, where. Uh, we have rallied, we gave back a little bit, but as well, the 50 moving average will be resistant. This entire area here, if we mark it up, entire area here will be resistant. So I do believe similar to gold that will drop down towards the 200 moving average and bounce from there. Um, yeah, I, I just don't see us getting through this area um, in the short run. We will take several weeks before we get back to these levels. I may be wrong, but that's how I see it at, the, at this moment. Uh, it is the massive move that we saw here. We just don't have that momentum at the moment. We basically have to go back down and then uh, technically recharge and then go, go higher. Technical indicators are mixed uh, we have the stochastic uh, crossing the signal line indicating bearish momentum the macd is uh, heading upwards for bullish momentum and the uh, rsi is also indicating bullish momentum but we may go higher i don't expect us to go through the 50 moving average I, if we get close to this area i think we break down uh, towards the 200 moving average so you have cocoa So, Kokoa broke down quite significantly, as I think they expected yesterday. We hit the 200 moving average and bounce. And that is a really good sign for Kokoa. Uh, we have tried that several times in the past, and, uh, and uh, we have bounced from, from there. So, at this point, I do believe that that will go higher. We'll probably stay here for a while. We'll probably go even lower before we go higher. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because the technical indicators are are very bearish uh, at this point. 
both the uh, Stochastic, the RSI, and also the MACD. But at this point, the 200 moving average is holding. It basically bounced really nicely from the 200 moving average. We are also above the 50 moving average, just above, just there. And uh, we created a nice hammer. This indicates that we have uh, buyers coming in, pressuring the price up. So we may see this market go higher from here. Um, if we were to break down and have a red candlestick underneath uh, the 200 moving average, then we'll also go lower. We'll go down to this level of uh, 2.355. And after that, we have to go all the way down to these lows of 2.089. To the upside, if we break uh, we break higher tomorrow, then we'll go up to these levels of 2.7. So if we look at platinum, so platinum has rallied significantly in the past days. We uh, rallied also today uh, just to to uh, give back some of the gains, uh, but we. This is not a really bad candlestick. Uh, we have some resistance above with a 50 moving average, but there's just so much uh, support underneath that I just don't see us getting through any of this. For example, all of this area here will be uh, support. This entire area here will be support. So if we did break down through the lows of, uh, of 825, then we have to get through this area and this area, and then we'll go down to the 582 level. I don't think that is going to be the case. I think that we will break through the 200 mo the 50 moving average and go to these highs of 978 and then to uh, 1000. And beyond that, we'll go even higher to 1000. 14 and so on so technical indicators for platinum are mixed at the moment stochastic shows uh, that will basically turn around and go down before we go up uh, rsi is flat and the macd is technically going to cross the signal line indicating bullish momentum so technical indicators are really mixed at this point um, I would wait and see what technically happens if we break through the 50 moving average and get a green candlestick above the 50 moving average, then we'll go higher. If we break down from here and bounce from the 200 moving average, uh, we'll ha technically have to have to see. I just don't expect us to get through all of this supported area here uh, without uh, locking down the world economy or something like that. So if you look at sugar, So sugar has rallied really nicely for the last two weeks, more than two weeks. We uh, gave back some of the gains today. And at this point, I do expect us to uh, fall further. We are overstretched. We are overbought. Uh, and at this point, it would make sense for sugar to basically fall back towards the 50 moving average before uh, we go higher. If you look at the stochastic, it is uh, it is about to turn around and go to uh, to downwards momentum. The MACD is 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 far away from the signal line. We'll probably have another two trading days before we turn around. Uh, we are overbought just uh, just slightly on that one, so it would make sense for this market to turn around before going higher. This is not a market where you should enter with a buy at the moment. That is too risky and you should technically should wait before this, to this market to fall before going higher. If we were to break through the 50 moving average, we have the 200 moving average just underneath there. We don't have a lot of data, so it's just a very small line. So if we were to break through that, we'll go to these lows of 0 0.1172 then to this low of 7, 0 0.1129, and then, yes, technically lower. There are several layers of support underneath, so um, I do expect us to just f follow slowly the, the 50 moving uh, average upwards. So you're welcome to support this channel by subscribing. You have a little subscribe button in the corner here and uh, clicking the like button and the bell button and uh, 
good luck trading. The market is really volatile at this moment, so so um, keep your your positions small and uh, uh, of course have a stop loss. Good luck.